Cool. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as I said, we're hosting a webinar today with Claire Cummings from Bon Appetit, what we'll be covering. Um, to start off with, I will provide a little bit of perspective in regards to the question, why work with dining services on a particular campus? What's the benefit? Um, then Claire uh, will cover national Bon Appetit Fair Trade initiatives provide insight on how to work with Bon Appetit on a campus-by-campus -campus level. Um, and essentially, we're going to be learning a good number of different um, examples and case studies from various sustainability initiatives that Bon Appetit has already offered on various campuses across the country and how they compare into some of the work that we do. Finally, at the end, we'll close with some time for questions to be asked of our speakers. So to get started, let's take a step back and ask ourselves, why work with dining services? Why even put the time and energy into highlighting in the efforts of this one specific group? Well, there are many, many reasons. And I could probably talk for hours on that subject, um, but two in particular stand out. First, two of the five goals to earning recognition as a fair trade college or university are directly tied to sourcing. Fair trade products on campus, which is goal number two, make fair trade products available on campus. We require a minimum of two fair trade products available on each campus owned and or operated venue. Um, so that's one of two goals where um, sourcing fair trade products is specifically um, drawn out as part of one of those five goals. The second is to use fair trade products in university offices, meetings, and events. So that would include catering as well as if you have um, fair, uh, products that could be fair trade in offices like a campus ministry or perhaps a sociology department or something along those lines. And so dining services is the actor on campus that can really help make some of those goals actually become possible. They're the ones that you need to partner with to work through any issues that may arise as you try to figure out how to get different fair trade products on campus. They're great resources through um, in working through some of those challenges. Secondly, dining services can be great and influential partners in spreading the word and educating about fair trade. You can multiply the impact of your outreach efforts by working with dining services to ensure clear and consistent signage, highlighting fair trade options, and by participating to host educational events like bake offs, taste testing, and other Events. So overall, it's important to remember that we, as a movement, strive to engage with the entire on-campus community, which in turn means reaching out and partnering with students, staff, faculty, administration, and most importantly, food service providers. providers. So let's make the most of this great opportunity that we have right now with Claire coming. Um, and so from, from here, I'm going to hand things off to Claire. Um, Claire is the West Coast Fellow for um, Bon Appetit. She will be sharing a little bit of information about that program. Um, and then also testing and covering a little bit of um, Bon Appetit's various national sustainability initiatives. So off to you, Claire. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, thanks for having me here today. Um, actually, Parker, I am no longer the West Coast Fellow. I am now Bon Appetit's Waste Specialist. Um, but I'll tell you a little bit about the fellows um, a few slides um, down. Um, I'm also Bon Appetit's Fair Trade Liaison. So um, before I worked for Bon Appetit, I was actually a lot like, um, like some of you on the phone. Um, I was a student activist on my college campus. And I was really passionate about food sustainability initiatives. So I got involved and started doing projects with my campus dining services, which happened to be Bon Appetit. As I worked more closely with them and learned more about their purchasing practices, I got really passionate about what they were doing. And I ended up becoming um, a West Coast Fellow um, with the Bon Appetit Management Company Foundation. And this picture is actually from my first week as a fellow when I was meeting with one of our blueberry farmers in Washington. Um, I'm now working full time on waste sustainability, but I have had the opportunity to maintain my role as the company's fair trade liaison, which is why I'm here talking to you today. 
Um, next slide. So um, before we jump into fair trade, I just want to make sure you all know and understand um, who we are as a company. Bon Appetit is an on-site restaurant company that provides cafe and catering services to colleges and universities, corporations, and specialty venues like museums around the country. We have over 500 cafes in 32 states, and what makes us unique and different is that we pride ourselves on providing food service for a sustainable future. So what does it mean to provide food service for a sustainable future? Well, I always like to share our definition word for word because it really gives you an understanding of why we do what we do and what makes us truly unique and different. So we define sustainable food service as flavorful food that is both healthy and economically viable for all, produced through practices that respect farmers, workers, and animals, that nourishes our communities and replenishes our shared natural resources for future generations. So let me tell you about how that mission translates to the work we do on the ground. Um, we have a wide variety of initiatives and company-wide commitments around sustainable food systems. And unfortunately, I don't have time to cover them all today, but you can definitely learn more on our website, www.samco.com. Um, but, you know, just to name a few, uh, in 2012, we became the first food service company to take a stand on the cruel practice of confining breeding sows to cages called gestation crates that are roughly the same size as they are 24-7 um, during their entire four-month pregnancy. Um, we asked our suppliers to stop using gestation crates. And um, by 2015, which happens to be the most aggressive um, deadline of any of the gestation crate bans out there. Um, in addition, we were the first food service company to partner with the Coalition of Immokalee Workers, CIW, um, which is a farm worker organization with whom we forged a new agreement that frames acceptable working conditions and enforces those conditions with a strict code of conduct for tomato growers. Um, the corner picture is um, of our CEO, Fidel Baccio, in Immokalee, Florida, talking to a member of CIW about the conditions right there in Immokalee um, for farm workers. Um, it, in addition to that, we have over 50 food recovery programs around the country, and we are rapidly growing. Um, in the past year, we have donated over 74,000 pounds of food from our cafes that would otherwise um, have gone to waste. Um, and the corner picture is of uh, one of the students at our account in, at Hampshire, um, and she's collecting food from our uh, cafes to donate to people in need. Um, and lastly, since 1999, we have required that every single one of our 500 plus cafes around the country spend at least 20% of their food dollars on small owner-operated farms within 150 miles of their cafes. To put that in context, we made that commitment seven years before Michael Pollan released his groundbreaking book, Omnivore's Dilemma. And of course, we have a number of initiatives around fair trade. Um, so in 2011, Bon Appetit became the first food service company to offer fair trade certified baking chocolate company wide. Our supplier of fair trade certified baking chocolate, Cordillera, has since dropped its certification, so we're working with Guitar to to find a new, um, or to set up a new national supply of fair trade certified baking chocolate. So stay tuned for more information on that. Um, in addition, uh, in 2011, we launched a pilot program to supply fair trade certified shirts made from 100% certified organic cotton to student employees in a few of our university cafes. Managers are now able to choose fair trade shirts in a variety of colors and with a slogan that reads, Organic, fair trade, dot, 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 this uniform is ethically delicious, which I just, I love that tagline. Um, and lastly, we have a number of accounts, as you all know, participating in fair trade colleges and universities. So pictured here is our general manager and market manager from University of the Pacific. Um, and the two of them have made over 20 products available in their campus market. Um, excuse me, 20 uh, fair trade certified products available in their campus market. 
and they have a goal of making 40 fair trade certified products available in the next year. They have even gone as far as to set up a whole fair trade section in their store so students can learn more about the products and know where to, where to go to find them. In addition to the programs that I just mentioned, we also have three regional fellows that travel to our colleges and universities around the country to work on sustainable food initiatives. They're all relatively recent college graduates who went to Bon Appetit schools and are passionate about food issues. They work with our accounts to host educational events and projects, and they can work with you to grow the fair trade movement on your college campus. So how can we help? Well, the fellows as well as our managers and chefs are available to help host events. This is a, um, these are some pictures from actually a coffee cupping we recently did um, on the East Coast with our East Coast fellow, Nicole Taco, um, with students at Johns Hopkins University. Uh, the participants got to learn about artisanal coffee as well as the importance of fair trade certification. Um, another way we can get involved with your fair trade campaign is through our national campaign. Um, so next slide, please. For example, uh, just last week we celebrated our annual Farm Worker Awareness Week, which was focused on educating our customers about the plight of farm workers in the United States. This month, we have our Low Carbon Diet Day on April 24th, which gets our guests thinking about the environmental impact of our food choices. And in the fall, we celebrate our local farmers on Eat Local Challenge Day. So I encourage you to talk to your BAMCO contacts about getting involved with our annual event. Lastly, um, you're welcome to tap into our um, wealth of expertise. So our chefs cook from scratch, and they use seasonal and fresh ingredients, and they are well equipped to help you host fair trade themed cooking classes or cooking competitions. They can also help connect you with our local farmers to set up visits so that students can see where their food is coming from and better understand what truly sustainable food service looks like. So how can you help spread the fair trade movement and better work with dining services? Number one is communicate. So once you start thinking about um, getting a campaign up and running, please immediately reach out to our chefs, managers, um, our marketing managers. You know, we want you to be persistent. Email isn't always the best way to, to get in contact with our staff. Um, so feel comfortable calling or even showing up in person. You just want to make sure you get connected to the right person because um, our chefs and managers are usually the ones that you want to talk to since they're involved in purchasing. Um, be flexible. So meeting that two fair, um, fair trade product minimum at every food outlet on campus can be really hard, and the products will likely vary depending on what type of food outlet it is. For example, catering versus the dining hall versus a market. Um, coming in with a wide variety of ideas for different products you could get on campus is great and a lot more helpful than, in, than expecting one product to be made available in particular. Um, be patient. Know that these changes don't always happen overnight and that we may run into some challenges with sourcing the products. Also remember that our chefs and managers are not always experts in fair trade and finding the right products can be hard. So be patient and be helpful and know that I'm also here to support you and your chef and manager. Ask questions. So our chefs and managers want to work with you, not against you. So feel free to ask them questions. This is a learning process for you both. Um, research, our general manager at Notre Dame de Namur, uh, Susan Mamlock, said that she really appreciated when students researched possible fair trade certified products for her. It was really helpful when they brought her a list of possible options, especially since only certain certifications count it is really helpful when we have students um, research the products ahead of time. And finally, spread the word. We can't do this alone, and we cater to the needs of all of our guests. So when more of our guests want to see fair trade, we have an easier time making those choices. Education, awareness raising, and campaign building all help us expand our ability to prioritize fair trade. So how can, how can I help? 
Uh, let's open it up for questions now. You're welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions, want to connect with a fellow in your region, or need my support in any way. Thank you so much, Claire. That was a fantastic overview of all the programs and opportunities that NFC offers. Um, with that, we're going to go into a question and answer period. So, um, first off, um, Claire, this is definitely down your alley. Um, what types of fair trade products are the easiest to integrate into um, dining services on most campuses? So, what's what's the easiest like? the low-hanging fruit if you're trying to get fair trade products on campus. I would say most generally speaking, we have um, a wide, um, a, a much larger variety of um, obviously coffees, um, beverages, um, uh, teas, those are all relatively easy um, and, and most accessible for us. The other thing is, um, you know, depending on what you're, what we're talking about, if we're talking about getting fair trade products in a market versus the dining hall, I would say that it's a lot easier for us to get um, those kind of uh, fair trade uh, packaged products that you would find at like a, a, a little small market um, rather than the, the larger bulk products in our dining halls. Um, so some campuses have markets, some don't, but um, I would say, yeah, definitely the beverage area is the, the easiest and best place to start. Um, but usually it's, it's really what's available in that particular region that you're in. And I always say first start off by asking your chef and manager what they have access to already. Um, usually a good place to start. Great. Um, another question is kind of on the education side of things. Um, how mm -hmm. can we generate more interest for fair trade products um, with the help of Bon Appetit? Like what kind of program can we partner with? Yeah, so um, we, well, first and foremost, um, you know, partnering up with your regional fellow. Um, and if you have not yet met the fellow that's in your region, um, please contact me. And I don't know, Parker, if anyone, if they got a long enough chance to look at that slide with my contact information. But um, it's claire.cummings at bamco.com. Um, the fellow in your region will travel to colleges and universities to partner up with you guys and host events. And they can actually do guest lecturing. So we've had fellows come into classrooms and give guest lectures on the issues um, around the treatment of farm workers. Um, and of course, they can talk about fair trade. Um, we also, as I mentioned, have our national events that you can kind of tap into. Um, we'll do movie screenings. Um, I always personally really like the events that are more fun because you often get a wider um, audience and better engagement from um, students across the board. So anything that you can incorporate food into, um, certainly ask your manager or your chef if they have any products that they can help provide for, for an event, if you guys want to co collaborate on an event. Um, I know we've done chocolate tastings for Valentine's Day, fair trade chocolate tastings for Valentine's Day. We've done coffee cuppings. Um, you know, there's a lot of great ideas out there, and I'm going to actually throw that back to Parker because I know that you, you've got the finger on, on the pulse of what's going on around the country and what great ideas are out there. but. You know, we're, our chefs and managers are available to help, and the fellows in particular are there to help with those events and those really cool, fun, exciting projects that you guys want to do. Yeah, and that's kind of building off of what Claire mentioned. Um, I think that events that are the most successful are those that focus in on the senses. Um, with Fair Trade, we're lucky in the fact that we get to work with a whole bunch of foods and products that people really, really enjoy. So that means that you can actually incorporate taste into education. 
And that's actually been something that's emerged over the last 10, 15 years as a way to really cement various concepts. Um, and so if we can actually get like good, good tasting foods like chocolate and coffee to almost tie into things, to topics and themes like social justice and environmental sustainability, then that's absolutely fantastic. So, um, kind of on for some of the specific events, how that would work or play out. Um, we've had a lot of groups that have done successful pairings of like chocolate tastings with um, documentaries, for example. So you actually get to learn and visually take in like the reality of a given situation, and then you and then you get to taste like the end product. So that's just one example. We have plenty of opportunities um, and various resources to help get events started at Fair Trade Campaign dot org slash resources. So that's where our resources page is. Um, and then for anyone who has more questions, you can always feel free to contact myself at ptownley at fairtradeusa.org. Great. So um, we have had another question come in. Uh, what fair trade certification does Bon Appetit, bon Appetit accept? Um, what is the process for using an external supplier um, for example, if one university specifically wanted to purchase, say, equal exchange coffee, how would that go about? Um, so I'm going to start with the first question, which is um, we don't have – so for fair trade colleges and universities, if you want to become a fair trade college or university, you need to um, get you, – you have to source products that are either – um, and Parker, please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, uh, Fair Trade USA, um, Fair Trade America, or um, IMO. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Um, as well as the Fair Trade Or, or and the Fair for Life. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, so first, you got to make sure that those count if you're working towards Fair Trade Colleges and Universities. We will, we will get. Um, we we don't have expectations, but. Um, since Fair Trade Colleges and Universities has those expectations, those are the ones that you want to source if you're working towards that. Um, and then in terms of, of getting a certain product, like an equal exchange product, um, we have uh, suppliers that we work through. And um, what the best way to approach that is to ask your chef or manager if they're able to get that product through their supplier. Um, and they can either, you know, if they have any trouble searching it, you can, most of them know that I'm out there, but you can also send them to me and, and feel free to loop me in and say, hey, I know you guys have this resource here. Maybe Claire can help. Um, I, we have tools for searching for those products through our preferred supplier and certainly requesting them if um, they're not available. And yeah, to no. add to that, um, it's not always um, – the issue isn't always that um, the product can't be um, – we can't get it through a preferred supplier. There's also issues with um, just the way the product is is, um, is packaged or distributed to us. Like, for example, um, whether or not it's coming with equipment, in the case of, like, tea or coffee, um, there's usually some other barriers that you'll want to ask your chef and manager about um, in terms of sourcing. Great. Um, and we actually just had another quick uh, follow-up question on that side of thing when it comes to labeling. And um, <laughs> Claire, you did a really good job going through some of the labels. Since there are like so many floating out there. Um, I just want to put out a side note that uh, Currently in the United States, there's about 400 labels that address sustainability or maybe go in different directions, such as ethical sourcing or even like energy efficiency. So there's a lot to sort through, and that can make it very confusing. So our process for Fair Trade College Universities is that we go to our national steering committee, which has students, professors, and nonprofit leaders. Um, from the fair trade movement, and they they evaluate and take in various certifications. Um, and so we have our own, I guess you could say, set of not criteria, but sort of like what are the values and principles of fair trade, and we take various certifications, balance them off of that, and see if they actually hold up. So at the moment, Fair Trade USA 
um, Fair Trade International, which is Fair Trade America in the United States, um, Fair for Life, which is IMO, and Fair Trade Federation, those four are all recognized by Fair Trade campaigns. In addition, we are in the process right now of evaluating um, a group called the Small Cities for Symbol. So um, it's, a, it's somewhat of a, it's an effort that's been around for a few years, but has only recently begun selling products with their label um, in the United States. So um, that's just an example of as things begin to change, we're constantly reevaluating. Um, somewhat similar. Um, Here's a question that I think is probably definitely for Claire. I think you would be great for this. Um, some local foods, which are ethically produced, as in produced in the United States, aren't fair trade certified. How do you suggest we integrate um, advertising and education products that may not have um, one of those four specific labels? Um, so. So yeah, fair trade certification doesn't yet um, or does not exist in the United States in terms of there's not entities that are growing food in the United States that are getting certified. But there's definitely still a problem um, with the treatment of farm workers in the United States. And so it is good that you're thinking about how to, um, you know, raise awareness around um, getting great food from our own backyard. Um, in terms of on Bon Appetit campuses, um, I think, you know, there's a, a couple of different ways that you can um, draw attention to these issues and also help um, students navigate um, in the dining hall what products are coming from those kind of more ethical or better sources. So for us, um, we have our Farm to Fork program, um, which um, if you go online at cafebonappetit.com, and then you search your campus, you can see on the menu which, where, which farms we're buying from in your area and um, which, which products on the menu are going to have those fair trade products, or I'm sorry, excuse me, farm to fork products. Um, so those are farms from within, within 150 miles, um, small, owner operated. Um, and, you know, the fellows can do farm visits. Um, with you guys. We can take you guys out to meet the farmers to see where the food's coming from. Um, in terms of um, the treatment of, of farm workers, you know, we're working on a couple different initiatives. I think Coalition of Immokalee Workers is a really fantastic organization within the United States that is working on the issues of, of um, the fair treatment of farm workers. And then the Equitable Food Initiative is another really good one. Um, Parker, did I answer that question? They were asking, I, you chopped, cut out a little bit, but they were asking about how to um, educate. Yeah, I think so. And I, I think that uh, okay. the, the way that I would go with it as well is to, to highlight some of the work of other organizations that you can go to that would have that information. Um, and as Claire mentioned, the Mockley Workers have a great program with domestic tomato production, for example, in the United States. Um, that's mm -hmm. mostly, if not, I think, 100% Florida. Is that right, Claire? Yeah, it's right now only in Florida. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so the Real Food Challenge, which is a group that's similar to Fairtrade College Universities, but they they have five pillars that they operate on in addition to, um, so Fairtrade is one of the five that they focus on, and then they have four other areas of sustainable food purchasing mm -hmm. that they educate on. They're a great group to um, look to for some of those areas specifically. Um, and they, I, they've partnered with groups like um, it's the Young Farmers Coalition of America. So that's something that's like more about the idea of justice when it comes to empowering small, small farmers as well as those who are looking to become farmers that may not even have the experience but really want to build like a new a new agricultural um, reality. So there's all sorts and of different resources add, out there for you. And I would just add that I, I think it's great that you're thinking about kind of how to, to pull all these issues together because, you know, fair trade alone isn't going to solve all of our problems. And so um, connecting, you know, as students get more engaged with just where their food comes from and 
the conditions under which it's produced, whether it's from, you know, somewhere nearby your cafe or miles, hundreds of miles away um, in Central America. I think both support, um, you know, the efforts of, of fair trade colleges and universities. Yep, I completely agree with that. So, um, essentially, there's a need for all sorts of different kinds of organizations and efforts, and they each have to spot, uh, shine a spotlight on um, different issues within such a wide and vast and important system in our daily lives. So, great. Um, okay, so we have about two more questions, um, and I'll just throw them, throw the first out there. Um, does Bon Appetit have, have a list of fair trade products we can choose from? So that's a little bit of a difficult uh, wouldn't, one. <laughs> wouldn't life be great if we did? <laughs> uh, so I would love that if we had it. Um, it's not something that's easy to get from our suppliers, and it's something that I've been looking into how we can at least narrow things down. Um, what you're asking gets that much larger challenges and issues with um, the whole food supply chain. And so we're really pushing our suppliers to start providing us with um, better information so that we can really get those, those great lists, you know, um, of different products that are available. Um, and unfortunately, once again, even if we were able to get those lists, it would totally vary depending on where you are in the country um, because the supply changes depending on where you are. So no, we don't have a nice clean list. We do have some tools for our chefs and managers on how to search, um, and I, I can certainly connect with your chef and manager to help them with that process. But um, it, you know, in terms of where to start and how to start looking, coming in with um, having students come in with with a, a list of different products that they know are fair trade certified that count, you know, as one of those four certifications that Parker mentioned. Um, it, it, coming in with a wide list that you guys know of and have been able to pull um, is usually a helpful place to start. Um, and then we can kind of consult with our suppliers to see what's available. Great. Um, and then this final question is a little bit related. I think we covered it a bit with sort of the how can I help section, but um, maybe just reinforcing some of those concepts. Um, as a student, what can I do to ensure that um, my school has access to very fair trade products through Bon Appetit? Like, you could say the number one, I guess, um, way that you can support, like, either um, is it usually like the the campus manager or the head chef on campus that you would be working with? I guess that's also kind of like a side question. Yeah. But, um, yeah. How, how do you best support? So. Number one, best thing you can do is reach out to your general manager and or your executive chef. And if you go to cafebonappetit.com and you search the name of your college or university, um, you have a specific page on there that's Bon Appetit specific. You can scroll to the bottom and you can actually see the name and the contact information for your chef and manager on campus. And Connect with them and ask them, okay, what's available currently? Um, can we get these products? It, really just starting the conversation. I think students are often a little bit nervous to, to connect with our chefs and managers. I don't know if it's those white coats or what, but we're really nice. We want to connect with you guys. And if you open up the, um, you know, uh, reach out and open up the opportunity to start a conversation, um, we want to work with you, and um, they should be able to, to at least get you a general sense of what's available now and um, can begin the process of starting the search. And if they express any, you know, issues with trying to navigate that process, you know that I'm here to help. So you can look me in and say, hey, I know you guys got this person that's helping with fair trade. Maybe she can help us. So feel free to reach out to me if you have any issues. Fantastic. Um, if anyone has some last minute questions, please type those in right now. Otherwise, I think we're going to 
wrap it up for the day. Um, and I just want to thank Claire Cummings for coming on board and being willing to share all of her expertise and um, answer so many of our questions. Um, it's a real pleasure. Um, and secondly, just want to remind everyone that a recording will be available and we'll be posting that um, and sharing it with um, students at Bon Appetit account. So thank you again, Claire. And um, I think with that, we are good for today. Great. Thanks, everyone. Have a good, good rest of your day.